You guys know the story when he got drafted, right? You well, heard that hear one. Let's hear it. Well, they they called him. This is when he's 17 years old. They called him up, <laughs> say, "Hey, Buff, we drafted you. We'd like you to come to our our uh, rookie, tour, rookie, rookie, rookie camp. Yeah, it's in three weeks. This guy's gonna be getting a hold of you. Blah blah blah. Okay, and hangs up the phone. As soon as he hangs up the phone, he unplugs all the phones in his house, <laughs> and basically disappears he doesn't want to go to the rookie rookie thing <laughs> he's like wait it's in a week so they had to put out like a nationwide search just to get a hold of him they couldn't get a hold of him just because he didn't want to go for some summer camp he wanted to enjoy his summer he just drafted right. we're sitting in there he finally got there and we they found him and got him there and i just remember we'd be sitting in a lounge like this and there'd be a tv there and of course if, you know, he's sitting front and center holding the remote, you know, and uh, everybody's just sitting around laughing with him, laughing at him a little bit. But he's, you know, buff. Like, he's never, a comedian. Never has a bad day. Oh, no. And guys were asking him, just getting to know him, you know, like, what do you, do you, do you know, have you heard of Joe Sackick? And he's like, I, who's that guy, you know? <laughs> never heard of Brandon Shanahan. Never heard of him. Never knew anything. Never, well, I don't watch hockey, you know, like. <laughs> Over the line, Bufflin right to the night, he scores! OT winner, Dustin Bufflin! He's one of three guys I just stopped trying to hit I because know. you'd go to hit him and he'd put you flat on your back and like, then he'd look around for like what hit him or what bumped him and you'd be like, <laughs> I know. I thought you didn't even see me and I was going to crush you and down I went. And I think I got him one. He said he took a year off when he was 14 or 15 and I asked him why. He's like, I just wanted to go hunting more. He is the biggest freak of an athlete I've ever seen. He then plays a back-to-back in Chicago Friday, Saturday, and then he leaves Nashville Saturday night to play five games in five nights with us in Hershey. This is like, I've never seen anyone play five games in five nights, and he was getting breakaways. He was literally getting breakaways shorthanded. Like, he was still leading the rush. What other player can be a defenseman in the minor leagues and then go up to Chicago, play as a forward, win the Stanley Cup, and then put back on defense? Dustin Bufflin, big buff. A player who redefined what it means to be a pro NHL player, both on and off the ice. Unlike some players who changed their personas over time, Bufflin remained true to himself through his NHL career, and fans absolutely adored him. Off the ice, he was known for his fun, hilarious personality, a gentle giant, if you will. On the ice, however, he would then transform into Big Buff a wrecking ball of a hockey player unlike anything the NHL had seen before or since. Bufflin's I'm just gonna run right through you and see what happens style of play made him must see TV every time the Jets were playing. His imposing stature at 6 foot 5 and 260 pounds coupled with his exceptional skills in both puck handling and skating made him a truly one of a kind talent. And what made Bufflin's career so remarkable was his ability to excel despite unconventional off-season habits. Buff would always balloon up in the off-season, gain weight, only to return on the ice as one of the league's elite defenders year after year. His career was so legendary, filled with so many memorable moments. However, it ended in real confusion, leaving many fans wondering what happened to Buff. Today, boys, we're going to delve into Bufflin's career, exploring his rise to fame and what he's been up to since his sudden retirement. Buff was clutch, had great regular season and playoff numbers. He was an all-star, member of Team USA at multiple international tournaments over the years. And some argue that if he had trained differently and avoided injuries, he could have been even better. So, boys, join me as we reflect on the life and career of Dustin Bufflin, Big Buff, a player whose impact on the game of hockey shouldn't go unrecognized. Big Buff was born on March 27, 1985 in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Young Dustin developed a deep love for hockey from a young age. Unfortunately, Bufflin faced adversity in his childhood due to not really seeing his father much, but he found support from his mother and grandparents. His stepfather, Dale Smedsmo, who actually played in the WHA and NHL for a little bit, would come into Dustin's life later on, and would play a crucial role in fostering young Bufflin's love for hockey. 
under the guidance of his stepfather and mother, Buff flourished at every stage of his hockey journey. Not only was he pretty much bigger than every other kid out there, he was gifted with natural talent. He owned his skills as a defenseman while growing up, emerging as a standout player. And yeah, Buff has pretty much played the same way his entire life. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Years later while growing up, the Bufflins would move to Warrenville, Illinois, so Dustin could play a higher level of hockey and get a good education. And Buff excelled on the ice, and he was well on his way to an NCAA career. However, his grades wouldn't cut it, and he wasn't able to meet the academic requirements to play NCAA Division Division 1 hockey, but I don't think Bufflin was all that devastated. For most kids, this would be heartbreaking. But Bufflin was never one to conform to others' expectations of what a hockey player should be. Instead, he charted his own course. I wasn't really the academic type of kid, Bufflin candidly admitted. I just kind of went with the flow. And the flow took Buff all the way to the WHL. Since his grades weren't on par with the NCAA standards, he went to the CHL and played for the Brandon Wheat Kings. And things got off to a dicey start. For whatever reason, Buff just didn't mesh well with his teammates in Brendan. And he was eventually traded to the Prince George Cougars. And it was there where he really caught his stride. Fast forward a couple years, Buff was really starting to become a top defenseman in the WHL. When Big Buff's draft year came around, he had some interest from teams across the league. But given that this was the 2003 draft, a 2003 draft that would go down as one of the best all-around drafts in NHL history, it was easy for Buff to get lost in that sea of talent. In 2003, he caught the attention of the Chicago Blackhawks. They would pick him in not the first, second, or third round, try the eighth round, 245th overall. Not only can you argue that this was the steal of the 2003 draft, but the Blackhawks may have had one of their best draft classes to date. As a teenager standing at 6 foot 5 and weighing 260 pounds, Bufflin's imposing physical presence quickly made him one of the Blackhawks' most intriguing prospects. After two more years playing for the Cougars, in 2005, Buff would transition to the AHL in the next chapter of his hockey journey. Buff would spend most of the 2006 season with the Norfolk Admirals in the AHL, and luckily for Bufflin, the Blackhawks were absolutely brutal around this time. The 8th round draft pick from just 3 seasons ago finished his first pro year in hockey with 23 points points in the American League and 5 points in 25 NHL games for a terrible, I mean terrible, Hawks team. It wasn't until 2008, after years of persistence and development, that Bufflin solidified his status as an NHL regular. Remarkably, his breakout season saw him tally 19 goals and 36 points, albeit as a forward rather than his accustomed defenseman role. And you can thank Blackhawks head coach Dennis Savard for this. Midway through the season, Dennis Savard recognized Bufflin's unique blend of attributes, promptly developing him on the wing to capitalize on his imposing presence around the net and his offensive prowess. This transition sparked debate within Blackhawks management, with Savard advocating for Bufflin's role as a forward, citing his impressive goal scoring record. The versatility Bufflin offered was undeniable, prompting many discussions on the strategic advantages Buff now brought to the team. As the 2009 season loomed and Chicago started to improve, it became increasingly apparent that Bufflin's unorthodox style provided Chicago with a wealth of tactical possibilities, underscoring his significance within the team's dynamic. Buff's evolution as both a physical force and a versatile contributor on both offense and defense continued to unfold. His playoff debut with the Blackhawks proved to be a promising sign of things to come, as Buff notched an impressive 9 points in 17 playoff games. Despite their valiant efforts, the Blackhawks were unfortunately eliminated in the Western Conference Finals in 5 games by the Detroit Red Wings. However, this subsequent 2010 season emerged as a pivotal moment for both Buff and devoted Blackhawks fans alike. For those who fondly recall his time in Chicago, 2010 stands out as the year he ascended to the status of a sports hero in the Windy City. Throughout the regular season, Buff epitomized the ideal power forward, showcasing a blend of scoring prowess, physicality, and tenacity that endeared him to the Blackhawks' faithful. His integral role in helping with the team's first division title in 17 years underscored his significance within a roster that many look back on as being one of the greatest in NHL history. 
as the playoffs back end Buff's impact only magnified. He had another solid regular season, Buff had some playoff success in 2009, but nobody could have expected what was about to come in the 2010 playoffs. His commanding presence on the ice signaled that he had truly arrived on the grand stage. Lost the handle. In front, Buffalo scores! Downstairs for Bona. Bouncing puck and right off the draw came off the skate to Bursteen. Bufflin claims another victim as he's done a few times tonight and it was Chris Pronger that he knocked down and the fans love that. Five game-winning goals to his name, including a memorable Game 3 hat-trick in the second round against the Canucks, Dustin Bufflin left a lasting impression during the 2010 Stanley Cup playoffs. He completely took over the net front presence, making life so difficult for Hall of Famer Roberto Luongo, leading to him feeling out of his element and rattled by the end of the series. Buff just continued his heroics into the next round, with three more game-winning goals in a sweep over the Sharks, including the Game 3 overtime winning goal, but I think his crowning moment came in Game 5 of the Cup Finals when he scored the game winning goal, putting the Blackhawks up 3 games to 2 in the series, and as we know they would ultimately go on and win Game 6. And he scored the icebreaker in that game as well, with 11 goals in 22 playoff games, with 5 of those goals coming as game winning goals, I think it's safe to say that the Blackhawks don't win the Stanley Cup in 2010 without Dustin Bufflin. And this playoff run would pretty much set the tone for Bufflin's entire career. And the Chicago Blackhawks were now set up for even more greatness. Just think about this for a second, Patrick Kane, Jonathan Taves, and Dustin Bufflin. Man, that could have became the best trio in Chicago sports history. Well, we don't live in a perfect world. Around this time, the Blackhawks faced significant salary cap constraints, and this led to the departure of many key players in the subsequent offseason. Despite Buff just coming off of a playoff run where he arguably could have won the Conn Smythe Trophy, despite being drafted in the 8th round, emerging as a homegrown talent for the Blackhawks with a vibrant personality, Bufflin found himself at a crossroads at just 24 years old. His role in some of the most pivotal moments during the Blackhawks 2010 Stanley Cup run hinted at a legacy that could have been legendary had circumstances allowed.
Buff's potential legacy in Chicago will go down as one of the biggest what-ifs in both NHL and Blackhawks history, leaving fans to ponder what might have been had general manager Stan Bowman found a way to retain him. Due to the salary cap constraints, the Blackhawks had no other choice but to trade Bufflin to Atlanta in the summer of 2010. Dustin Bufflin was now a thrasher. During Buff's first season in Atlanta, he embarked on the anticipated next phase of his career, solidifying his status as a formidable presence on the ice. It became obvious to those watching that the player they witnessed during the postseason was not merely a flash in the pan but a genuine force to be reckoned with, and his journey had only just begun. Upon his arrival in Atlanta, Bufflin underwent a significant positional shift, primarily going back to the defenseman role. However, this adjustment wasn't without its challenges. Thrasher's head coach, Craig Ramsey, remarked on the initial hurdles Bufflin faced, noting a lapse in timing on rushes, subpar gap control, and a tendency to focus on the puck rather than his opponent. These early struggles highlighted the need for Bufflin to readjust to the demand of his former position after spending spending considerable time altering between forward and defenseman roles with the Blackhawks. As Buff navigated through the challenges of readjusting to his defenseman role, his natural instincts and keen hockey sense became increasingly evident. Possessing an innate ability to anticipate plays, he showcased remarkable stick skills, adeptly intercepting passes and executing precise poke checks. By utilizing his imposing frame effectively, Bufflin became a formidable presence in the defensive zone, consistently outmuscling opponents to regain possession. As he grew more comfortable in his new role, his ice time expanded and with it, his statistical output surged. Big Buff's tenure with the Atlanta Thrashers marked a pinnacle in his career as he achieved personal milestones and emerged as a linchpin for his team. Notably, he surpassed the 20 goal mark for the first time in his career, a remarkable feat considering he was a full-time defenseman again. And his impact extended beyond mere goal scoring, as evident by his clutch performance with six game-winning goals in his debut season for Atlanta. Unfortunately, the team was never really good. His remarkable on-ice presence was reflected in his increased ice time, which surged from 16 minutes a night to an impressive 23 minutes per game. This enhanced responsibility not only underscored Bufflin's importance to the Thrashers, but also allowed him to showcase his versatility and enduring presence. Furthermore, Buff's stellar performance didn't go unnoticed by the National Hockey League. As he garnered recognition by finishing 7th in Norris Trophy voting, Bufflin now looked like he was about to become the new face of the Atlanta Thrashers. Well, as history showed us during the Atlanta Thrashers era, despite possessing considerable talent over the years, the team consistently struggled to assemble a supporting cast around its star players. As a result of always putting out such a poor product on the ice, Atlanta's inability to perform competitively led to dwindling attendance figures, exacerbating the franchise's challenges. There was a whole bunch more too, like there was a whole decade's worth of terrible drafting, but that's a story for another time. In the 2011 offseason, it was announced that the Atlanta Thrashers were no more, and they would be relocating to Winnipeg and rebranding as the new Winnipeg Jets. With the relocation came a significant shift for Dustin Bufflin, who now found himself as the face of the newly minted Winnipeg Jets. In wake of the franchise relocation to Winnipeg, Dustin Bufflin solidified his commitment to the team by signing a lucrative five-year $26 million contract extension in that offseason. With his future secured, Bufflin continued to thrive on the ice. The 2012 season proved to be a standout year for Buff, despite playing in 16 fewer games compared to the previous season. Remarkably, he managed to match his total points from the previous year. Before the start of the 2013 NHL season, a lockout granted Dustin Bufflin some more additional time off, during which he famously arrived at training camp just shy of 310 pounds. Some guys are just blessed. It's quite remarkable to consider how he could transition from that state to showcasing the agility and finesse required to maneuver around opponents on the ice. 
This period marked the emergence of Bufflin's distinctive personality within the league as he began to solidify his status as a star player and character. The people loved that Buff was unapologetically himself and never tried to be something he wasn't. Fans loved Buff for his ability to dominate opponents through a combination of sheer strength, size, and speed, which garnered him a significant competitive edge. And despite the initial distractions of his weight upon arriving at training camp, it didn't affect Buff performance on the ice at all. He managed to put up a respectable 28 points in 44 games during the lockout season. Bufflin's seemingly effortless ability to excel without adhering to the strict training regimens or dietary restrictions echoes a rare trait observed in some athletes, akin to the likes of Phil Kessel. It's a testament to his natural talent and raw ability, which transcends conventional expectations of fitness and conditioning. Leaving many to wonder, if he was this elite without training, what would his numbers actually look like if he had taken that side of his game more seriously? Despite the Jets still struggling to secure top spots in the regular season standings, Bufflin continued to shine individually. In 2014, he achieved a career-best 56 points and secured his second 20-goal season. Moreover, Bufflin's role expanded significantly with him regularly logging about 24 minutes of ice per game. And these stellar performances over the years in Winnipeg really catapulted Buff into the upper echelons of NHL defensemen, and he began to garner widespread recognition as one of the best defensemen in the world. In 2015, the Jets broke a significant drought by clinching a playoff spot for the first time since the team's relocation, and Dustin Bufflin played an instrumental role in this achievement. Despite the Jets being swept in the first round, it was still a step in the right direction. And Buff tallied an impressive 18 goals in 66 games. 2015 was just another step in the right direction for Buff. Oh yeah, there was also that Evander Kane incident, which I don't think anybody can really blame Buff for. During the 2015 season, the story goes that Evander Kane, Buff's then teammate on Winnipeg, arrived late to a team function wearing a tracksuit. This was a violation of the NHL's dress code policy at the time, which mandated players to wear jackets, ties, and dress pants to games. Or in this case, a team function. The guys in the locker room were now starting to get really annoyed and couldn't take any more of Kane's douchebaggery. So Bufflin, known for his fierce loyalty to his teammates, reportedly responded by tossing Kane's tracksuit into the showers. This incident was a little unconventional, but come on now, it showed Bufflin's character. By doing this, Buff let Kane know that as long as he was a Winnipeg Jet, shit like this wasn't gonna fly, and he had to play by the rules just like everybody else. So Buff took it upon himself, further solidifying his reputation as a leader both on and off the ice. Kane was shortly traded to Buffalo after, and Winnipeg would finish the year off strong and make the playoffs. Over the next two years, the Winnipeg Jets experienced more of a transitional period than anything else. Now infamous five-year, $37 million extension with Winnipeg. And at the time, this deal was seen as a no-brainer, given Bufflin's consistent contributions and endearing impact on the ice. The 2018 season marked significant turning points for the Winnipeg Jets franchise as they emerged as a formidable contender in the NHL. Finishing second in the highly competitive Central Division was a testament of their newfound legitimacy as a top-tier team. Buff continued to be a key contributor, tallying 45 points in 69 regular season games. However, as the playoffs loomed, the world was about to witness something they hadn't seen in eight years. A sleeping giant known as Playoff Buff was about to wake up. Side. Bufflin walks towards there, takes the shot, he scores! For a little, here's Bufflin, he shoots, he scores! Shifley, in front, Pop almost buried it, Bufflin goes! Stash lead a line here, across the ice, score! And back comes Mark Shifley, dropping in behind him, Bufflin shoots, he scores! Nearly eight years after his previous display of postseason dominance, as a defenseman this time, not as a forward, Buff was arguably just as impressive, notching an impressive five goals and 16 points in Winnipeg's 17-game playoff run. The Jets navigated past the Minnesota Wild in the first round of the playoffs and engaged in a memorable classic seven-game showdown against the Nashville Predators before advancing to the Western Conference Finals. 
Unfortunately, their journey came to an end as they were defeated by the Vegas Golden Knights in five games. Nonetheless, Bufflin's standout performance during the playoffs reaffirmed his status as a key player and leader for the Winnipeg Jets. In 2019, despite Dustin Bufflin enduring a season shortened by injury, his on-ice performance remained consistent with his illustrious career. However, after the Jets got knocked out in the first round by the St. Louis Blues, whispers began to circulate indicating that Bufflin might not be starting training camp on time due to lingering injuries. The news of Buff's absence came as a devastating blow to the Jets, particularly as the team seemed to be making significant progress. Given his exceptional talent and contributions, his departure dealt a harsh blow to the team. Heading into the 2020 season, Buff was a no-show for Jets camp, signaling a potential end to his legendary tenure with the team. In September, Buff informed the Jets that he wasn't prepared to retire, but also wasn't ready to return to the team anytime soon. Consequently, the Jets suspended him due to the situation. About a month later, in October 2019, Bufflin underwent successful ankle surgery with a projected return slated for early 2020. About a month later, he contested his team suspension, arguing that passing all pregame physicals at the end of the 2019 season should absolve him of blame. In January 2020, Buff shocked the hockey world when he told the Winnipeg Jets that he wasn't going to take part in his rehab assignments, and this caused speculation of a potential trade involving one of Winnipeg's franchise players. Well, that escalated quickly. It wouldn't be until April 2020 when a surprising turn of events unfolded, as it was announced that the Winnipeg Jets and Dustin Bufflin had mutually agreed to terminate the remaining two years and $14 million remaining on the deal. This decision shocked the hockey world and left many puzzled and confused as to how someone could walk away from such a lucrative and storied career. But for those who knew Buff, they weren't that surprised. Though financially secure, the suddenness of Bufflin's departure left lingering questions about his motivations and future endeavors. Dustin Bufflin's departure from the NHL was certainly unconventional, but he remained unapologetically true to himself throughout the entire process. Now having accumulated substantial wealth, Buff reached a point where he no longer felt compelled to compete in the NHL, unless he could maintain his elite level of success. With approximately 60 million earned during his career, he felt he had nothing left to prove. And he really didn't. With a Stanley Cup ring, an impressive career record of 525 points in 869 games, Buff's legacy was already firmly established. Particularly notable were his remarkable playoff performances, tallying 50 points in just 66 playoff games, solidifying his reputation as a clutch performer in critical moments. And there could have been so much more. But in the end, Big Buff decided to prioritize his personal happiness, and we should respect his decision. While there may have been a time when Buff's return to the ice seemed possible, at 39 years old and fully embracing retirement life, his hockey journey has drawn to a close. Buff seems to be a natural at everything he attempts. In retirement, he seamlessly transitioned from a successful NHL career to pursue his passion for pro fishing. Embracing this new chapter of his life, Buff found fulfillment in doing what he loves. Despite his departure from the hockey world, it's evident that his influence continues to resonate. Buff's legacy extends beyond the rink, leaving an indelible mark on those he encountered and inspiring others to pursue their passions fearlessly, even in his absence from the game. Throughout the years, various stories about Bufflin from his playing days have resurfaced, offering glimpses into his personality and character. For instance, his appearance at the Blackhawks 2010 Cup reunion in 2020 showcased his endearing connection with his former teammates. As this was the COVID year, so it of course took place over Zoom, but you could tell how happy everybody was as soon as Buff hopped on. We all saw how Buff handled the Evander Kane situation. He was willing to go to great lengths for the sake of his teammates, and he left a lasting impression on most of those he played alongside. Like I said before, Bufflin was never one to confirm to the other's expectations of what a hockey player should be. Instead, Dustin Bufflin did it his way his entire career, and once his body couldn't take any more and he couldn't perform at his elite level, he chartered his own course, driven by his passion for the outdoors.
Bufflin's unique approach to the game off and on the ice was undeniably effective, earning him universal love wherever he played. Renowned for his clutch performances, relentless heart, and unwavering hustle, despite misconceptions about his training habits or passion for hockey, Buff remained true to himself throughout his career. Blessed with natural talent and athleticism, he seemed to effortlessly excel on the ice, no matter what he looked like, reminiscent of figures like Babe Ruth or Phil Kessel. From his integral role as a power forward on the 2010 Stanley Cup winning Blackhawks, to establishing himself as one of the greatest defensemen in the history of the Atlanta Winnipeg franchise, he left behind an indelible mark on the sport. And there will never be another player quite like Big Buff.